Good morning. Welcome to all of you who are here, and especially to visitors. I know we have at least one time, one first time visitor, but there may be more. We're glad you've joined us here, and trust that our time together worshiping the Lord will be very meaningful to you. And also welcome to those of you online. It's good to have you here with us too in spirit, and we trust that the Lord's presence will you know, come right across those miles and be in your living room or wherever you are right now. Next Sunday, we have a really important congregational, well, it's not a congregational meeting. Let's call it a time for brainstorming and dreaming. Um, we'll have lunch at 11, and then we'll spend time in uh, little breakout sessions and brainstorming for what's going to happen next. Where's God taking us? We've just finished our internship with intern Vicki and have some new ministries started, and there's many ways we can take those deeper, perhaps wider. What might you think God is doing? And we welcome everybody, whether you're a member or just an, or an attender every week or um, whatever role you play here, you're welcome to come. The flowers today are from our young married couple, Bob and Helen Zimmerman, 64 years on Tuesday. That deserves applause. So here's a little secret. If you look back at the oldest directory you can find of this church, you will, and the picture from behind, you will see Bob and Helen in that pew. <laughs> I have searched you out in every directory, and that's right where you've been probably for almost 64 years, right? <laughs> and that's great. We're glad you're there. The only downside to that is I always know when they're not here. <laughs> um, just a reminder to you that the back pews and this, this section up here with the chairs, those are um, specifically for um, people who have walkers or wheelchairs. So if you find yourself sitting in one of those places and you see someone come in with a walker or a wheelchair, if you could just move to another place. So they'll be sure to have one of those places. And if you look at that cute little cartoon in your bulletin, there's always room up front. Always. <laughs> and also, one more thing. That, that page on the back of your bulletin today that says sermon notes, Janet put that in there, and I'm honored that she thinks someone might want to take sermon notes. But I would encourage you either to jot down things that really catch your attention or take the bulletin home with you. We just recycle them. We don't save them all. Take them home and read those scriptures through all week. And think about them. There's great prayers in here. There's words to songs. Spend devotional time with your bulletin. And um, that will make good use of all that paper and ink that we continue to run off. And now let's just stand and prepare our hearts for worship with a few moments of silence. Almighty and triune God, you have brought us here together. You created within us the desire to worship with you here in the sanctuary, those online in their homes, to gather together to spend this time focusing on you and worshiping you. We pray again that you will open our eyes and our hearts and our ears and our entire lives to your Holy Spirit so we can follow you and love you and participate in your work in this world. We give ourselves to you now at this time in this service, knowing that you are here. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who looks upon us in compassion, forgives our sin, and heals our lives. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Have mercy, O God. Against you, you alone, we have sinned. In your compassion, cleanse us from our sin and take away our guilt. Create in us a new heart and give us a steadfast spirit. Do not cast us away, but fill us with your Holy Spirit and restore your joy within us. Amen. Hear God's words of forgiveness for you. As tender as a parent is to a child, so deep is God's compassion for you. As high as heaven is above earth, so vast is God's love for you. As far as east is from west, so far God removes your sin from you, renewing your life through Jesus Christ. Blessed be God who crowns us with mercy and love. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing together, Praise the One Who Breaks the Darkness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. If you're able, please remain standing for the Kyrie and Song of Praise.
Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your wisdom, instruct us. And by your hand, protect us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. The psalm today is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 23 through 32. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. They beheld the works of the Lord, God's wonderful works in the deep. And God spoke, and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and descended to the depths. Their souls melted away in their peril. Then, in their trouble, they cried to the Lord, and you delivered them from their distress. You still the storm to a whisper, and silenced the waves of the sea. Then they were glad when it grew calm, when you guided them to the harbor they desired. Let them exalt you in the assembly of the people. In the council of the elders, let them sing hallelujah. The second reading is from Corinthians 2, um, chapter, uh, verses 1 through 13. Paul and his fellow workers experienced great hardships and even rejection while carrying out their missionary work. Nevertheless, Paul continuously proclaims that God has not rejected us, but is graciously, graciously working for our salvation. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now the, is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonment, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and in good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known as dying. And see, we are alive as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to you as to children. Open wide your hearts also. Word of God, word of life. Just a minute, Dave, we have a children's sermon here. We just messed it up for everybody. We switched things around. <laughs> um, come on up, children. I don't know if we have a whole boatload today or not, but I brought the boat. <laughs> mm. 
All right. This is your lucky day to get in a boat during church. <laughs> Have a seat. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit down too. They promised me they would help me up. <laughs> um, we've talked before. I know um, intern Vicki talked with you about what disciples are. And we know that disciples are people who follow Jesus. They were, he was their teacher, and um, he chose them to follow. Usually people would choose their teacher, but he chose them. So one day they'd been having a really hard, long day, taking care of people, healing people, and they were really tired, and it was, you know, they were fishermen. The best place in the world for them was in the boat. So Jesus said, let's get in the boat and go over to the other side. And the, the lake they were on was the Sea of Galilee, and it's not, it's not very far across. So they got in the boat, and Jesus was so tired, immediately he fell asleep. Have you heard this story before? No? Okay. So let's pretend we're in a sailboat, and it's going very smoothly, and the breeze is blowing in our face, and it's like, oh, this is the best place in the world to be. Oh, finally we can rest. Someone pulls out a sandwich. You know, it's just a good time. And all of a sudden, because in that sea, it's down in kind of a valley, and all of a sudden the wind can just whip up like that. And all of a sudden they were in a storm that was too big for them. So what would be, I, I thought maybe if there were really little kids they'd like to act this out, and I'm guessing you two don't want to act this out. <laughs> but, um, the, you know, they were going back and forth. The water was sloshing in. And these are people who are in boats all the time, so they know what to do. And they know this lake. And so they say to Jesus, or they don't say to Jesus, they try everything they can, and they know they're going down. It's, it's not pretty. And um, the waves are higher than their boat can handle. And all of a sudden someone says, where's Jesus? Shouldn't he be doing something about this? And they look for He's sleeping. He's sleeping, even though the water is splashing in on him, he's sound asleep. They wake him up, and what do you think they say to him? They say, don't you care about us? You're sleeping, and we're going to drown in a few minutes. How come you're not helping us? Now, all the pictures show Jesus standing up. But maybe he didn't stand up. Maybe he just looked around and went, Peace, be still. And he wasn't talking to his disciples. He was talking to the water. And immediately, it calmed down. In fact, it was as still as glass. What do you think the disciples felt like? What do you think, Lizzie? Confused? What just happened? Yeah, what do you think, Nora? Confused. Do you think they're glad? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And all of a sudden, you know, in the Bible, there's a lot of... The sea is actually a symbol for chaos. So they've just been in total chaos. And Jesus just calmed it. Who does that? Only the creator, right? So they say, who is this? Do you think it helped them to start really believing in Jesus? I think so too. That's our story for today. And now I'm going to talk about it a little more, but let's... Thank Jesus for being in the boat with us, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for being in the boat and being God. We pray in your name. Amen. Okay, now let's see if there's another miracle. I did it. <laughs> And now the gospel acclamation. Please stand.
The Holy Gospel, according to Mark, the fourth chapter, beginning with the 35th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took with them in the boat. They took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat so that the boat was already being swamped. But Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we're perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. When the rubber hits the road... This is a great metaphor for how we react and who we are when life gets rough, when things aren't perfect, or maybe when they're really awful. That's when we discover who we really are and what we really believe. Today, instead of when the rubber hits the road, we're going to use the metaphor uh, when the boat hits the water, or perhaps it should be when the water overwhelms the boat. Or, as nice as boats are, they're not a great place to be in in the storm. You know, you get the idea. We're going to use the boat today. You just heard me read the familiar story of the life-threatening storm that Jesus calmed. If you were raised in a Christian church, you've heard this story since you were a small child. And if you're new to Christian stories, you're probably a little puzzled. I try to imagine hearing these stories for the first time as an adult, and I can't even picture what my response would be. It just sounds so unbelievable. Let's do a little digging. First thing we need to do is put it into the bigger story. We're early in Jesus' ministry with his 12 disciples. Jesus is teaching them and using a lot of metaphors to explain that the kingdom of God is near. He's taught that God's message is like seeds that are sown all over the place. Rocky soil, thorny soil, good soil. He's talked about whether or not a seed takes root and grows. And he admits sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Last week, we thought about God's kingdom being a seed that starts as small as a mustard seed. The seed is disruptive within itself because it has to die before it can spring to new life. So God's kingdom is disruptive, first of all, to God's very self. The seed also becomes invasive as it spreads and grows, just as the words of God spread into every nook and cranny of human lives. In the end, the kingdom is redemptive, as it reaches into lives and creates newness and sanctuary and eternal life for all who receive it. Now, Jesus is the kind of teacher who's determined that what he teaches will be understood by the people he's teaching. And right before our story today, Scripture records that Jesus always explains everything to his disciples so that they can understand. He's a rabbi, a teacher. He wants them to get it so they can live it and stake their lives on it. He gives them knowledge, but he uses stories they'll remember. He builds one concept upon another, just as every good teacher does. 
He makes room for their questions and for the questions of other people, too. But knowledge alone is never enough to build strong faith muscles. Let's say that again. It's important. Knowledge alone is never enough to just build strong faith muscles. Knowledge isn't enough to make us fearless. Knowing something factually and living it fearlessly are two very, very different things. Imagine a fitness class filled with people who sit at desks and read about fitness and take exams on their computers. They might know everything there is to know about fitness, but until the rubber meets the road or the disciples hit the gym, well, knowledge is just knowledge. So in this fourth chapter of Mark's Gospel, after all of Jesus' good teaching, we reach our story today, and the water swamps the boat. It's time for some life experience. It's time to build faith in their hearts. Here they are, probably 13 men, including Jesus, weary from a long day of ministry, eager to get away from the dust and drama of the day, ready to be on the water, in a boat, on a lake, they know like the back of their hands. Sounds so good right now. Fresh air, a slight breeze, the calm movement of a sailboat on the water, the smell of the air. They look back at the shore and see the people dispersing. For right now, they're at peace with Jesus among them. And even though he immediately falls asleep in the stern of the boat, there's got to be a sense of, oh, life is so good right now. All is well. Let's call this the ah moments and think about those times when life actually makes sense to us. Those times when we can say, things are so great. Everyone in our family is doing well. We're so grateful. We're so blessed. It's easy during those times to believe that God is good. God is with us. God is faithful. And of course, that is absolutely true. (sighs) But notice what happens next in our story. It happens so quickly. A major, major weather change. That happened a lot on the Sea of Galilee. Without warning, nothing is <sighs> anymore. Our scripture says a furious squall comes up. The sails are whipping around and waves are crashing into the boat and the boat is nearly swamped. Just like that. And they're going down. These experienced fishermen have run out of tricks and cannot save the day. And they are filled with terror. Maybe if they'd just known ahead of time and had time to plan ahead for this. Or maybe if Jesus had awakened the minute the wind picked up and told them something they didn't already know to get them safely to the other side. Maybe it's Jesus' fault. But none of that happened. Within a matter of minutes, they moved from God is good, to where is God anyway? That's what happens in our life more often than not. We might go to work one day and discover via email or an announcement over the PA that our company is closing. Our source of financial stability has just disappeared. Or a health crisis seems to come out of nowhere or an unexpected family death, or a child in trouble, or divorce papers you didn't expect, or a heartache that cannot be calmed, or a pandemic, or a war, or the difficulties of aging that force you to leave the home you love and move into a whole different way of life. Where is Jesus in all of this? When life goes from calm to a raging storm, when our fear turns into anger, 
And we blame Jesus for this situation because it seems he doesn't really care about us. Because if he did, he'd already be fixing things. We're dangling in the middle of a crisis, and we can't fix it ourselves. So we yell at him and accuse him. Don't you care we're drowning here? Don't you care we're going down? Twenty eleven was a really rough year for Horace and me. It was my first year of seminary. I had major back surgery in May, and then in September a surgery on my thyroid, and you've probably heard this story before. All seemed okay until a few days after the surgery when the extended pathology report came through. The phone rang and my very serious surgeon said, You have cancer. That wasn't detectable before. See you Monday for another surgery. I spiraled from ah to ah in about two seconds and went out to the deck in the back of our home and paced it furiously and yelled at Jesus for quite some time. Don't you care? I can't take a third surgery in four months. Don't you care what I've already gone through? Where are you? Anyway, can you hear the wind whipping around me and the water sloshing into my boat? Do you notice who I'm blaming for it? Well, our pastor showed up immediately because Horace called him while I was yelling at Jesus. And he read, the pastor read today's story to me, and I heard the words of Jesus speaking to our storm. Peace. Be still. Jesus spoke calm to the wind and the waves, but he also spoke calm into the disciples' fear. And he speaks calm into our storms and our fear, too. Suddenly we realize how we've been doubting him, how quickly we've aimed the blame at the one who loves us, who's intervening for us and never leaves us by ourselves when our boat is going down. So when Jesus gently chides his panicked disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? We understand it. Because when our storms calm, we ask ourselves the same questions. Why didn't we trust his love? Why didn't we go to him first? Why didn't our knowledge about Jesus automatically become a fearless faith in Jesus? Well, partly because our knowledge needs lived experience. Our knowledge need times when our walls of self-sufficiency come crashing down and we have only one choice and that is to call upon Jesus for faith and courage, strength and wisdom. To call upon Jesus to save us. And of course he will. And he does. This experience of his power and love will now become part of our own faith story. It will combine with the knowledge we have in our heads and become the faith of our hearts. So the next time the wind roars around us, we will remember that Jesus is still in our boat and he's ready to speak peace to our storms. We are not in the danger we think we are, and we're not alone. We are not forgotten. We are kept in this storm and loved and safe. And so are our families and our friends. And in truth, so is the world around us that feels so frayed and frantic. The storms may rage, and they do, and they will. But Jesus is still in the boat, and we will get to the other side. There will be a time to reach harbor, dock, 
and move forward again. And when we do, our faith muscles will be strong enough for whatever comes next in our lives. We won't be absolutely fearless. <laughs> no. But we'll be a little bit fearless, a little less fearful than we were before. We'll remember Jesus' words, peace, be still. We'll remember that the creator of the universe and the wind and the waves and that creator of you and me is still God Almighty and is still in control. Next time, we'll turn to him more quickly. We'll trust him a little bit more. And he will be there. Just as he is now. Amen. Let's stand and sing our response to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Fellow disciples, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Equip your faithful people to approach this world with a sense of wonder. Make your church a safe place to explore big questions, troubling doubts, and honest laments. Humble our hearts to repent of the ways that communities of faith have hurt each other. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. You spoke creation into order from the chaos of the swirling deep. May your name be praised for the beauty and sustenance water provides. Secure clean water for all people and protect water sources from contamination or exploitation. Merciful God. Amid whirlwinds of division, violence, and conflict, remind us again that you are as steadfast as the foundations of the earth. Rejuvenate peacemakers, advocates, and community organizers when they feel weary in their work. And during the tumult of an election year, please teach us to trust you for guidance. Merciful God. Deliver your people from their distress, O oh God. We lift before you all who are sick or healing. Jerry, Mary, Stacy, Audrey, Dave, Craig Schmidt's dad, Walt, Ryan, and those we name in our hearts right now. Grant consolation and peace to all who live with chronic, terminal, or persistent illness. In times of affliction or hardship, sustain us in faith. Merciful God. We pray, too, for those who have lost loved ones to death in the past year. And we remember especially the family of Edie Guggenberger, who passed on Monday. Give all those who grieve the direction and courage they need to face each new day. Comfort them in their loneliness and give them your peace be still. Merciful God. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation for all the redeemed of the Lord. Join together with a great cloud of witnesses. We give thanks, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. I cast on The peace of our risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Please share the Lord's peace and love with one another.
Please stand for the offering. Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours, and your faithfulness is sure. Word and water, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Receive the gifts we bring and nourish us to proclaim your abiding love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God triune, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Over the eons, your merciful might evolved our home, a fragile tree of life. Here by your wisdom are both life and death, growth and decay, the nest and the hunt, sunshine and storm, darkness and light. Sustained by these wonders, we creatures of dust join in the ancient song, the earth is full of your glory. O God triune, you took on our flesh in Jesus, our healer. In Christ, you bring life from death. We remember his cross. We laud his resurrection. Broken like bread, he enlivens our body. Outpoured like wine, he fills the earth with goodness. Receiving this mystery, we mortals sing our song. The earth is full of his glory. The The earth is full of his glory. We praise you for the heart of Jesus, so filled with your love for this earth. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered around this table, we see we, your children, unite in this song. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. O God, triune, you create the worlds, you uphold the living, you embrace the dead. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of this earth. Strengthen us for our journey with this meal, the body and blood of Christ. Give us a future that trusts in you and cares for your earth. Empowered by your promises, we rise from our depths to praise you again. The earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Amen and amen. Amen. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This morning we're serving communion by intinction. Um, if you've never worshipped with us before, you may not be sure how we're doing this, but you will be led forward by the ushers. And there is in the chalice, you'll see gluten-free wafers at the front, wine, grape juice, and then you'll be handed a wafer. Dip it into the wine or the grape juice. Take it into yourself and then return by the side aisles. The feast is ready. You are welcome if you're a believer in Jesus Christ and know he's your Savior and died for you. Come, taste and see how good the Lord is.
I can tell that's one of your favorite songs. <laughs> Please stand. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you, O oh God, that you have strengthened our hearts through this feast of life and salvation. Shine the light of Christ on our path, that we may do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you, now and forever. Amen. Receive the blessing. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you all, now and forever. Amen. And we'll close today with, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song as I journey. Go in peace. Christ is with you in the storm and in the calm. Thanks be to God. Have a good week, everyone.